It's time for another one-off rebuild and today we head over to Spain and to Valencia who in real life currently are very much in a relegation battle. I believe they've just came out of a relegation zone but it's certainly a big threat to them. So we'll be taking the challenge today of rebuilding Valencia in Football Manager 23. We'll be giving ourselves five years as Valencia boss purely focusing in on the transfers to try and take this club out of a relegation battle and hopefully climb them higher up the table maybe even to be Spanish champions within five years. There's a lot of work to do. It's an aging squad. It's a squad that to me doesn't seem great. There's a few good young players in there, but we'll talk all about that in a second. Before we get started, if you could go ahead and smash that like button, I'd greatly appreciate it. It will really help with the video's performance and help the channel out, which is awesome. And these one-off rebuild videos usually attract a wider audience, some people that maybe haven't seen the channel before. So if you're watching and you're not currently subscribed, I'd massively appreciate it if you hit that button to help us get to our next goal of 20,000 subscribers. It's completely free to do and only takes a few seconds. So a big thank you to anyone who does that and let me know in the comments who you'd like to see rebuilt next but let's take a look at Valencia. This is a club covered in history over the years in La Liga. It was only a couple of decades or so ago that this club was runners-up in the Champions League two years on the bounce. They never got that title, but they were very close to doing it. But when it comes to the Spanish First Division title, they've won it six times, twice in the 2000s era. The club, unfortunately, is way off from repeating any of that success, but their situation currently leaves them way off ever being able to compete at the top of the table right now. They've won a few European competitions in their past, namely three Europa Leagues, which is quite impressive, of course. And their last cup success came in 2019 in the Spanish Cup. So it's been a while since they've had any silverware, but they're still a very reputable club. They've got good facilities all around within the game of Football Manager, a huge and historic stadium in the Mestala. Jose Gaia is one of the stars of the team and has been a great player within Football Manager for years. We've also got Edison Cavani at 35 years of age up top. Gabriel Paulista is another one of our better players at the age of 31. We've got some good young talent though in the likes of Hugo Guillemon here that you can see who is already ready for that first team. We also have Thierry Rendel Carrilla, a Portuguese fullback with plenty of ability who we've signed in a few rebuilds in the past. Yunus Musa is another one, the young American with plenty of potential. So there is something within this squad in terms of talent. But if we sort it by age, you can see a lot of their key men, a lot of the players that are free stars or higher. They're all 27 or older. You can see there is a decent mix of ages within the squad, but a lot of the key players in this team are quite old. We do have a young goalkeeper though, a Georgian by the name of Georgi Mamadashvili. I'm hoping he'll be very successful in goal for us. So there are some good young players to build around around but the squad certainly needs some work. Financially there's £32 million in the balance and only £1 million or so in the transfer budget for this year. They've done most of their spending already and we probably won't do too much in our first season. There's about £100 million or so in the debt that we need to sort out and the staff situation is also pretty appalling. We'd like to see that be a lot better. Hopefully by the end of a rebuild we can sort that out but the club's in debt. We haven't got that much money to spend. We've got a decent squad but realistically we are nowhere near competing for the title just yet. Whilst they are in a relegation battle in real life, FM doesn't have them so low. They think we'll come mid-table, 100-1 to to win the title and the ninth best side in the league. In terms of what the club want from us in our first season, they just want us to finish in the top half of the table and to sign young players and use the club's academy to develop talent to eventually sell for a profit. That's the overall aim. As you can see, for people who complain about me having the editor on normally and making myself unsackable, it's gone for this rebuild, so we could potentially get sacked early on. It's your fault if we do. I usually have it there to make sure we can't be sacked. But now it's up in the air. We could potentially lose our job in the first season, but we're going to see how we get on. In terms of a tactic, I'm not too sure yet. We'll talk about that after the first season is over in terms of what we set up with, but we'll see if we can make any transfers first to try and sort this team out. So I have made my transfers for season one and we really didn't do all that much. We had this player, Marcos Andre, a 25-year-old Brazilian striker who had been at Valencia for a year or so, played a lot but didn't score. I just didn't really see a place for him in my team. We're playing a one-striker system 
system and we've got Cavani and then a young Spanish striker by the name of Doro underneath him. So I thought, you know what? We'll let this guy move on. He goes to Brazil, 2.6 million. It is a loss for the club, but it's some money for us to spend at least. And we also let our third choice goalkeeper go, Christian Rivero. He has moved to Real Sociedad for about 1 million pound. He's only going there to be a backup. He was our third choice here. And I thought, you know what? Let's get him off the wages, get some money in and we'll give that squad spot to some kind of youth academy product or something. If we can get some cash for these kind of players, we'll certainly take it. And that was it really. If you look at their transfer business this season as a whole though, they've sold about 50 million pounds worth of players, the likes of Colas Sola to PSG, Guardes to Wolves. And then in terms of incomings, a lot of our players this year are loans. A lot of the more talented players we have also. And you can see what the game considers our best 11 here currently before the start of season one. And four of those players are on loan. Nico, Mariba, Cliver, and Lino. So we certainly need to sort that situation out. But we can't really make most of these deals permanent. We haven't got the money to do so. So it's going to be a completely different squad in season two. But let's see where this squad can get us in the first season. Can we survive? Can we do okay? And by the way, in terms of a tactic, this is what we're going to run with 4 free free gig and press nice and easy to build around and the game suggested it so we're going with a one striker system a 4 free free hopefully we can do okay in season one and then we can really get our teeth stuck in to the rebuild so let's run the first season and cross our fingers that we can at least stay in the top division and i'm going to take no credit for this whatsoever because we really did nothing other than weaken the squad with a few transfers out but i've simulated the season and straight away We've got some silverware. Don't get me wrong, it's not the world's most incredible piece of silverware. It is only the Spanish Super Cup where we had to win two games to win the trophy. Firstly, we beat Real Betis 4-0 and then that moved us into a final where we beat Barcelona 3-2. So Spanish Super Cup is ours. We'll certainly take it. The Spanish Cup or the Copa del Rey, I believe this is, we got knocked out in the quarterfinal by Real Madrid. And then in the league, we got a super impressive finish, finishing in the third place spot on 78 points way away from Barca and Real Madrid at the top of the division, but we managed to get more points than Atletico and also Real Sociedad to finish quite comfortably in that top four. We've got a UCL spot. In real life currently, I believe they are floating around the 16th, 17th place, so this is a far cry from where they are in real life, but it's certainly a very successful season, and let's see which players were the stars. I did already have a look at this, and you'll be surprised to see somebody is not letting age get the better of him. Edison Cavani has got a 7.5 average match rating across the course of a season scored 30 goals from 41 appearances and that is just insane he is still a very good player in FM his physicals haven't started to decline and we are very happy to take him you can see just how good of a season he had there but outside of that I do have a bit of a worry and that's because if you look at our highest performing players we've got Mariba, Cliver, Nico and Lino as four of our best and all of those were players in on loan so we certainly need to try and adapt to that next season bring some players in to at least try and fill their boots and I wouldn't be surprised if next season is a backwards step but we'll see how we get on when it comes to the transfers but good to see our young player Yunus Musa having a good season and developing nicely the same for Correa at fullback also having a good year and then Mamad Rashvili also did pretty well for us. When it came to simulating, the only thing I did was told the assistant manager to play these two as often as possible to try and get them to develop. It certainly worked. We've had a good year, but now let's get onto the transfers and start sorting this team out. I'm going to warn you already, some of these transfers aren't very pretty. We've not had much money to spend at all. The budgets weren't great. We've kind of just started to let some players' contracts expire, sell off a few Deadwood players. But in terms of the incomings that we need to know about... One of them is Marco Piacca, a free agent who's been loaned from Juventus all around the Italian divisions. His contract's expired. We thought we'd pick him up with so many of our players being loanees last season. We just needed some extra players to fill the gaps that they've left. So Piacca is one of them. Another player we've picked up on a free is Telmo Arcano, a 22-year-old Portuguese player. He comes from TND, a club in the second division of Portugal, where he had a great year last year. It allowed our scouts to notice him and we've brought him in. He covers a few positions positions and whilst he's not a star I mean to get someone for free who's worth about 10 million not the end of the world is it I think it's a decent bit of business he'll help the side out maybe make a profit on him later down the line and we made another signing for completely free signing Jan Paul van Heck from Brighton on a free transfer they decided not to extend his deal and I feel like they've made a mistake he's a very good ball playing defender right footed a tough tackler good physical attributes and is currently valued apparently about 20 million pounds or so he comes in as a potential 
central centre pack option for us, and it now leaves our side looking like this. I'll just ask the assistant here to suggest for every position, but we've got Mamar Dashvili as our main goalkeeper. At right back, we have Rendel Correa and Folkier as his backup. At left back, we've got Jose Gaia and Jesus Vasquez deputising for him. Our centre backs are Paulista, Mukhtar Diaby, Van Heck, and we've also got Sainz here as well. Apologies for my pronunciations on some of these players. I'm sure they're not great. In midfield, we have this guy who is out on loan, Juros Racic. He's coming back to us after a season out at Braga. We have Hugo de Limon, as mentioned earlier, Yunus Musa, Almeida, Arcanjo, Kobelien, also coming back from a loan. Up front, we've got Edison Cavani and Hugo Doro. But when Edison Cavani starting, sometimes Doro has been filling in here in the inside forward position. But our squad has certainly taken a hit after those loanees have gone back to their clubs. And this is what our best 11 now looks like. It's a big change from last season. The defence kind of stays about the same, but midfield and attack is near enough completely changed. We'll be crossing our fingers that we can at least get some kind of European football this year, but I think it's going to be very tough for us. So let's see how we do in season two. Hopefully we can start knocking the debts down a little bit and get some money to spend next season. And I've got to say, we are very happy with this yet again. Despite not really improving the squad and actually having it get worse, we've got pretty much the same points as last season, much closer to not making the top four, but we are here in third place, still a way away from those top two clubs, but we finished in third on 74 points and we get Champions League football yet again. The cup competitions didn't go as well this time round. And when it comes to the Champions League, did we make it out of the group stage? Well, the answer is yes. Unfortunately, though, we faced off against Manchester City in the round of 16 and lost 8-2 on aggregate, 5-0 at our home stadium. A very embarrassing time. But when it comes to the group situation, we did okay, managing to get out of a group that included Rangers and Bayer Leverkusen. Chelsea topped the group quite comfortably. That has hopefully helped us a little bit financially. We've now got £40 million in the balance, £20 million to spend next summer. And also our debt has been knocked down to about £75 million or so. So the club is progressing nicely, but we do have a little bit of an issue. Last season, we were relying heavily, heavily on loan players. This season, we're relying on some older players that aren't going to be here next time around. Edison Cavani's contract's expiring. He's not allowing us to negotiate because apparently he is considering retirement. You can see he scored more goals in games this season for us, and he is huge boots to fill in this team. Even at such an age, he was scoring so much, but it looks like he might go on to bow out on a high. And Gabriel Paulista decided it was time for a new challenge. One of the highest rated players at our club is going to Brazil after his contract expires at the end of this year. Again, another sad one to lose. Lots of change happening in this squad now. Two key players leaving, two club leaders as well. But with some money to spend in the third season, hopefully we can make some great transfers a little bit better than the likes of Piaka that we bought in last summer. But hey, we've got to do the job that's in front of us. We did it in season one, we did it in season two, and now for season three, it's time to spend some cash. A sale that I forgot to mention from last season, we let go Ere Comer for about £1 million or so in the transfer window. And this season, alongside those contracts expiring, we've also let go of Samu Castelleo, who has gone to Getafe for £1.5 million. He was playing a lot for us last year, but I think we've got some better players now to cover those positions, or at least some players I feel we can build around because no offense to him, he's fine, but he's not like world-class or title challenging kind of player. And I want to bring those kind of people into our team. And I think we've done that. Our first signing is a player here on loan from Manchester City. His name is Filip Stefanovic. He was out on loan in the Portuguese divisions in the first year of his save, didn't do great, came back to City, wasn't used much. I'm planning here to loan him in, get something out of him and potentially try and sign him if he does okay. You can see his transfer valuation is very high but his contract is starting to expire soon in a couple of seasons. So if we loan him in here, see what he's like, maybe we can go for him next summer, but he's a nice depth option that we don't have to pay too much for. We signed a centre-back by the name of James Gomez, a 22-year-old Gambian international who our scouts rated very highly. I was aware of him before the video, but if you don't know in these rebuilds, I don't use any of my prior knowledge. I go purely based on scout recommendations. But James Gomez here comes in from the Danish divisions from AC Horsens, where 
where he had a brilliant year last time round. He's got a lot of time to get better and be a good player for us. Physically, very dominant, strong and good in the air. I really like the look of him and he can hopefully take Paulista's place or at least try and fill his shoes. We've made another free sign-in to help with our squad depth situation, signing a 29-year-old Norwegian by the name of Christopher Zachariasen. I don't really know how you pronounce it, but he comes in from Ferenc Veros. He's got incredible average match ratings over the last two years, and hopefully he can replicate some of that success with us. But our two biggest sign-ins this summer were two very good young players. The first one is this guy, Yanis Antiste, a striker who comes from Sassuolo out in the Italian divisions. He was at Spezia, went out on loan to Amiens in the second division in France, scored a lot of goals there, went to Sassuolo, didn't do so great. We've paid £5 million for him. Scouts seem to think he's pretty good. He can play up front or out wide, but maybe he can fill in Edison Cavani's position eventually. I don't expect him to really take the league by storm, but he's a good depth option to cover up top with Hugo Duro. But our biggest sign-in was the young Swede Rooney Bargi, who we've signed from FC Copenhagen, where he's been excellent at such a young age. He's been there for two years, and he's only 18 here, and he's not 19 for another half a season or so. So we've got a very good player here, a young player with lots of experience. He's going to cut in on that left foot from the right-hand side, valued at about £50 million, and we only paid 7.5. I think that's a great deal. We'll either sell him on for a profit, or he'll become a real talisman to carry us up the league. We'll see how it goes, but I think that is some good transfer business there. It now leaves our best 11 looking like this, and I much prefer it now. It's Mamar Dashvili in goal with Rendell Correa, Diakabi, Van Heck, who we bought in ourselves, and Gaia at the back. Guleman, Rashic, and Musa in midfield with Baji, Duro, and Antiste as our forward line. I feel like we could use some more depth up top, but that might have to come next year. We've got some money left in the budgets, but I couldn't find anyone that I really thought we needed this summer. So we'll save it. We'll use that to pay off a debts and loan, improve the club situation, the facilities, and next year we'll be able to spend a lot more, I would have thought. But keep an eye on this guy, Jorge Kano. I just want to show him because he's shown us having a lot of potential. He's really consistent and there was loads of clubs that wanted him. But I think next year when he's 18 or so, he could step right into the first team and be a great player for us. So we're going to simulate season three now, see how we get on. And then after that, we've only got two seasons left to go. So if we want to start pushing for the title, we need to really start about now. And who would have thought that team that we just made that was filled with some, you know, young players, but not a great squad, needed a lot of work. Who would have thought somehow we'd go on to win the title, getting way more points than we did last season. Granted, Real Madrid and Barcelona didn't do as well this year, but within three years, we've already achieved our aim of winning the Spanish first division, a 90-point total, only four losses. It's been an incredible year from us. We'll find out what happened in a second. The cup situations weren't as good, and the Champions League, I don't actually know how far we got. Did we make it out of the league phase? We might have done. Did we get in the knockout playoff rounds? No. Looks like we didn't even make it out of the league phase, so... Clearly, we're not that great of a team right now, but for some reason in the league, we've managed to absolutely smash it. Let's try and see who those players were for us that did great this year. If we sort by average match rate in, Rooney Baji was exceptional, but Yunus Musa really came into his own. And surprisingly, Yanis Antiste, the young striker, he only scored a couple of goals last year in the Italian divisions, but he comes here for just over £5 million or so, plays 32 times and scores 29 goals, which is an incredible return. He looks like a good player on paper but I'm really surprised he's done that well for us and he's basically guided us to a league title. Stevanovic wasn't as good but James Gomez has done well, Van Heck has done great, Duro, Guillemon, Gaia, we're building a really nice team here and it's great to see Yunus Musa developing so well. A lot of these players now are wanting new contracts, but a big issue that we're having in La Liga is obviously everybody has to have a release clause. If you didn't know, everyone playing in the Spanish divisions has to have a release clause of some value. It's how PSG got Neymar from Barcelona. But yes, that's something that we are going to have to deal with. I'll try and keep the release clauses high. Hopefully it doesn't really cause a problem. But our team has done great in season three. We finished top and it's giving us a nice transfer budget to spend next year so with this much money we can probably bring in some more stars and maybe start competing on the European front. Okay, on to season four's transfers now, starting off with the outgoings. But before we do, if you are enjoying the video up to this point, smash the like button. And if you're still watching right now, let me know in the comments by typing Facundo Gonzalez or just Gonzalez to let me know you're still watching. I'd massively appreciate it. And those comments help with the algorithm as well. But our first sale was exactly him, Facundo Gonzalez, a player that was hanging around the club, not playing much. We got 1.3 million pounds and sent him to Nacional out in Europe 
Uruguay. Marco Piaca came in as a free transfer after our first season. We've now sold him as a 30-year-old for 2.7 million to the Mexican divisions. Didn't play much last year, so it was time for him to move on, but a nice bit of profit and someone that helped us for those couple of seasons at least. We did loan a few players out outside of that, but in terms of incomings, we didn't have too many. One of them is this man, Alejandro Francis, a Spaniard who was playing for Zaragoza out in the second division of Spain. We've paid £9 million for him, which is quite a lot for a second division player, but he was playing really well for them, really consistent and a lot of football under his belt for a player who's only 22. But more importantly, he offers cover at both right back and centre back, which I think will help us in terms of versatility and squad depth. So he's came in, another Spanish player in our ranks. But last summer, we bought Rooney Bargi as a star on the right. Now we have a star on the left, 23-year-old Tales Magno coming from New York City FC out in the MLS. He's played so well for them across the course of his simulation that we just had to buy him. 8.25 million pounds was the transfer. He's got the potential to get better also, and I really think he'll be a great player for the club. And it will now allow Doro to go further forward and compete with Antiste for that striking position as opposed to being stuck out on the left. And here is now our best 11. It's still Mamadashvili in goal. It's still Correa, Van Heck, Diaby and Jose Gaia at the back. Guillemont stays in the team as does Musa and Vacic who's been a very surprising player for us. Done really well since coming in off loan of Braga. He wasn't someone I knew about but he's certainly helped the team. Then we've got Bargi, Antiste and Magno as a young forward line that's hopefully going to get better over the years. You can see we're starting to get a little bit thin in the squad depth fair Areas, but that is because we've let a lot of players contracts expire that we didn't want to be here got rid of a lot of deadwood and I'm very happy now with these squad options around the club we've got some good young center backs and full backs some good midfielders and a lot of players that are homegrown as well that Jorge Cano that we spoke about before has made his way into the first team and I'm sure will be a big part of the team this year he wasn't great on loan at Cadiz but he's got a lot of ability and hopefully he can show that with us but this is where our team is currently at there's a couple of young academy products in here just to fit familiarize yourself with them. Samuel Ibe, a young Spanish right back, and Kobayashi, a young Japanese right back. None of these guys we signed, they all came out of the academy, and that's great to see for our team. But yes, we're set up for season four. We won the title last year. Can we win it again? Can we win some cups? Can we maybe push for a Champions League trophy. Let's see how far this team can go. Ouch. We have been brought down to earth a little bit here. We didn't make the top four this season. We came joint fourth with fourth place, but because of our head-to-head -head record, we've actually been stuck out in fifth. We've got a Europa League spot for next year, and it's been a very disappointing year when it comes to the league, like 20 points less than last season. However... Despite not winning anything else, it was a much better performance across the board. Semi-final of the Spanish Super Cup, not too bothered about that. But we were runners-up in the Copa del Rey and more importantly, made it all the way to the semi-finals of the Champions League where we lost to Tottenham. Maybe the amount of games we were playing eventually did us in, but we were so close to getting into a final, only losing on penalties. But if we did, we would have faced off against a way superior Manchester City side. So on the European front, we've done great, nearly getting that Champions League. But for our final season... We won't even be in the competition. We'll be in the Europa League, which hopefully is something that we have more of a chance of winning. But we're now in fifth. Hopefully next year we can push back up the title. We're going to have to do a lot of transfers to do so. But let's see how our team did, how our new signings did. If we sort by average match rating, we have got Antiste again as one of our better players. Magno did brilliantly in his first year as well. So we're very happy to have him on board. Jose Gaia still playing well, as is Musa, Baji and Mamar Dashvili. We've got some players here to really build around. I really wish his name wasn't so hard to say. We're just going to call him Georgie from now on, I think. I should have done that at the start, really. It would have saved myself a lot of hassle. You might see now, though, when I sort by best 11, that one player is missing at the back, Van Heck. And you know how I mentioned release clauses earlier? I didn't know this until we finished the season because I make the transfers and then simulate the year. But we actually lost him midway through, not even midway through, after I showed you guys the transfers. We then simulated ahead and then sometime in October of all times, Al Nasser from the Saudi Arabian divisions came in and activated his release clause. Now they did pay 30 million, which is a really good fee considering we bought him for completely nothing a couple of seasons ago. But you can see here he was doing well for us and then was snatched from under our grasp. He's done really well out in Saudi Arabia. But if you do look at our form, 
I mean, it's not exactly hit and miss, but you can see he would have been here until about October time. And look how quick our form changes. After winning most games and only drawing a couple, suddenly we start not playing so well. And I have to think Van Heck leaving caused that. But we've now got a lot more money to spend next summer. Loads in the wage budget as well. So I think we can really improve this team. Really sad to see Van Heck go. And I would argue if he was here, we would have at least had a Champions League spot. So we're going to try and sort that out in the summer. But we've got one final season as Valencia boss to complete the rebuild. Build. So far, I would say winning that title was incredible. Outside of that, is it successful? I mean, compared to real life, yes. But I would really like to push for a European competition. So let's make the transfers and see if we can maybe win a Copa del Rey, maybe get the title again. We'll see what goes on, but we need to bring in some top quality players first. We have had a summer for the ages. We've really improved our team, in my opinion, for our final season here. We'll start off with the outgoings. Andre Almeida has been here since our first season. We pretty much make all the money back that we originally paid for him. We didn't sign him ourselves, but the club did in real life. Um, he's been a good player for us, a good squad depth option. Over the years, you can see he starts most games as a substitute, but he's done okay for us. I just thought it was time for him to move on. He goes to Portugal and we get £5 million in the bank. The young Japanese right back we looked at earlier, Kobayashi, had a bid come in from Chelsea. He asked to go, so we thought, you know what? If you don't want to be here, we'll let you leave. £6 million or so for him is a nice bit of extra cash that I didn't even think about having. James Gomez is left at centre-back. Quite a surprising one, considering we lost Van Heck last year. You'd think we wouldn't weaken again at centre-back. But when you see who he bought in, you'll understand why I've done this. But he's gone to Rennes for 9.75 million. He was complaining as well, kicking up a fuss. And we had a bit of a dynamics issue because of him. He became a bit of a bad egg in the dressing room, wanted a new contract, was upset players had left and whatnot. So we've decided to move him on as well. But our big sale was one that was taken out of our hands. I really liked him. But Thierry Landel Correa, the Portuguese fullback, who can play on either side and has been great for us for a few years, had a big come in from Man City and I could not convince him to stay day he wanted to go then players were upset that I wasn't letting him go so I thought you know what let's just end it we found a potential replacement for him took 22 million pounds into the bank and it gave us some good cash to spend a player that I forgot to mention in last year's window by the way Hugo Veltlesen here who we got on a free from Bodo Glimt he's done well for us in his first season but I just thought I'd point him out another good bit of business that we've picked up for free and we continue signing players when their contract expired this summer by going for Samuel Ricci here an Italian international with loads of ability and an incredible value of about 70 million but he was at Torino and he decided not to extend his deal we had to battle it out with some clubs like Borussia Dortmund for him but we did get him to sign a deal with us he's been so consistent in Serie A I think he's a great player for our team he can really help the squad in terms of our current ability and it will mean that the players that are no longer in a starting 11 drop to the bench and give us a really strong bench option so I'm really happy to bring Richie in I think he's going to be incredible but we've got even better players than him this summer this one's more of a low-key signing though, not really too much to note. A backup goalkeeper coming in from Freiburg. His name is Noah Atabulu. He was playing as their main goalkeeper in the Bundesliga and we've got him for free. Miguel Almoron also joins on a free deal. We love the free transfers here. I just needed some squad depth on the wings. He was one of the few players available. So he's came in from Newcastle where he's been doing really well for them actually. I don't think he's going to tear the league up, but I think he's a good, useful option to have in the team. We replaced Randall Thierry Correa at right back with with a Borussia Dortmund right back by the name of Miguel Marga, who they signed from the Portuguese divisions. And he's been pretty good for them. We paid a pretty big fee, actually, of 28 million. But he's very quick at the back, which I think will help us a lot. Good going forward. And even though he's not the ideal replacement, I think he could potentially do the job for us. He's also a few years younger than Correa. So I think it's not the worst business in the world. He only cost a few million more than what we made from the sale of Correa. He's got big boots to fill, though, has Marga here. So hopefully he does a good job of it. But with Van Heck gone and James Gomez, we needed two centre-backs, really, to be our starting centre-backs. And the first one that we signed was a left-footed defender, Goncalo Ignacio, a brilliant passing defender coming from Sporting Club de Portugal goal in the Portuguese divisions where he's been insane for a few years considering he's only 24 he's already had pretty much six full seasons of first team football we signed him for 34 million a big transfer but he comes in as one of our best players 
but you'd be surprised to know he's not even our best centre back at the club because we also, in the same window, signed Jan Claire Todibo from Nice out in the French divisions, where he's been exceptional. He's right footed, also very good on the ball. So we bought in two really good ball players, two consistent centre backs, one left footed, one right. One's 26, one's 24. So we could get like five or six years out of this partnership. Both really good in all aspects of the game and strong mentally. And I think we've created a mega team now. And for our final best 11 of the video before our last season of the rebuild it's Georgie in goal with Marga, Tadibo, Ignacio and Gaia at left back who's transfer listed by request but no one wanted to pay his 44 million pound valuation so he's still here. Gilimon is in midfield wanted by some huge clubs we've got Rishi and Musa in the midfield with Baji, Manyo and Antiste up top. We've also got some very good options on the bench and just to show you quickly how that young player has developed Jorge Kano here looks like an absolute wonder kid of the ages a brilliant player but yeah I think we've really made a great team here lots of squad depth all around plenty of players that can help contribute to the first team so the squad set up we're going to simulate our final season and hopefully complete our rebuild of Valencia in a great way by winning at least another piece of silverware that's the aim so let's see how we can do and here we are on the 31st of May and you know what Despite a poor performance in the league, we are competing with two giants in Real Madrid and Barcelona. I can forgive it this year. We've qualified for Champions League football again, which I think for any Valencia fan, they'd be more than happy with. But outside of that, we've won the Copa del Rey and we've also won the Europa League. We beat Roma in the final 2-1. So in this rebuild, we won the league, the Super Cup, the Europa League and the Spanish Cup, whilst also helping this side get to another level with a great set of young players. Before we cover exactly who were the best performers and how we got to that final, let's just show the finances where we now have £136 million in the balance, £51 million to spend, and the debts and loans are near enough cleared, so we've done a great job there. The staff situation is incredible. We now have the best staff in the league. We've got a development centre that's producing loads of great young talent for the first team and to sell on for a profit. And our facilities and recruitment and coaching are way better than they were before, so we're really happy with that. But how was our our season. Well, you can see a bit of a mixed bag considering we only finished fourth in the league, but we did get to that final. We went 1-0 down by the looks of it, and then Bargi and Antiste got us the win there. And we had to beat Barcelona to win the Copa del Rey. Antiste getting a hat trick to counteract two goals from Lewandowski and one from Tete. A late winner from Antiste in the 87th minute, just after Barcelona had equalised. That would have been a crazy moment for any Valencia fan to have experienced. But we've done awesome. I'm really happy with this. The Europa League, did we face any anyone else on the way, anyone special. Galatasaray, we absolutely destroyed 7-0 on aggregate. And we also knocked out Sporting Club de Portugal for a very, very good season, I would say. Yes, we're 20 points off our highest total in the league, but still the Europa League and the Copa del Rey came home. I would definitely say we've rebuilt Valencia here. It's certainly a far better situation than where they're at in real life. And we built a very nice team as well. If you did enjoy the video, smash the like button for us, comment who you want me to rebuild next, and subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'd really appreciate it if you do hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching everyone and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.